Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about a famous YouTuber who's getting into trouble because they decided to return their adopted child. That's right, we've got a pretty interesting, pretty scary kind of bad story to go over today. We're talking about a YouTuber named Micah who adopted a baby from the Far East a couple years ago and since then they've been posting videos about it non-stop. Basically their whole channel is based on making baby kinds of videos, videos about adoption, videos with their family, stuff like that. And inherently that's not necessarily wrong on its own, but it already does seem a little exploitative, like these YouTubers that use their kids in videos, these family vloggers can get a little too much at times. Sometimes they put their kids in everything, they put cameras in their faces, they do pranks on the kids, all kinds of stuff like that. And that might not be specifically the case here, but it happens a lot, it's kind of upsetting. And it's kind of weird. I don't watch that kind of stuff. I know families and vlogs and that kind of stuff can be interesting, especially if you're of the age, if you have a family yourself, things like that. Nothing against that, but there is definitely a line that can be crossed when you kind of overdo it. You take too much time away from your kid's normal life. You make it so they have cameras around them all the time. It gets a little stressful for them. It's not really fair. It's kind of like the same kind of thing that would happen with child stars on TV, but now they're child YouTube stars. And sometimes those kinds of kids don't get to have a normal life. And that's not really as far as we're going today because we're just talking about a baby and we're just talking about a parenting YouTuber who kind of adopted this baby and then got sick of it after a couple of years and sent it back. It's really kind of, um, uh, what? Uh, I don't know. You look at someone like that, you're like, why'd you adopt the baby then? What, what did you get yourself into? And understand, you know, not everyone is ready to be a parent but the fact that they use that baby to make money for so many years it just makes it look really really bad like they just kind of cast the role in their sort of youtube reality show and the fact that they're dropping the baby now i could see why there's controversy behind it i could see why people are a little shocked a little upset and it goes to show the kind of people that would do that i mean really you spent all those years with that baby and you have to give it back i mean that's the kind of sad sad story you see in a movie and a sad thing like i mean most people if they're really ready to even adopt they would be latching onto that kid for the rest of their life i mean that's what you would do with your real kid but that raises a lot of questions, a lot of issues, a lot of angles here. So with all that said, let's jump to the article. It's from Insider. It says, parenting YouTubers are receiving backlash from critics who say they rehome their adopted son with development disabilities after monetizing videos about him. Yeah, that gets to the heart of the issue right there. And a little more details too. I mean, also looking at this picture, you can see and guess a lot about these people. I don't know. The guy has a very strong uh, looking look to him uh the chick doesn't seem to seems pretty normal kind of like a pretty girl uh maybe they just weren't ready for the kind of responsibility but the fact that the kid had disabilities too is really tragic it sucks and it just goes to show you know them making the money off of it they already made their money they're already making a lot this is a big channel i think it has seven hundred thousand subscribers like a big one and they've gotten a lot of views made money off of it and then they just dump the kid and that's just looks really bad obviously and it's heartbreaking you know it's stu it sucks what's going to happen to that kid like they just treat it like they're returning the tv to the store or they they got a washing machine and it needs a repair and they send it back i mean it's not that kind of situation and then the fact that these people made the money off the kid already and they're sending it back I mean, it really is questionable. You, and you can see this is actually a clip from, I think, their apology video or their video where they announced it. And they're kind of trying to be sympathetic. They wear the white and they're looking sad. This girl's like fake crying. It's very exploitative. And classic YouTube stuff, though. This is a, this is a pretty... I mean, I almost expect it from YouTube at this point because of the drama and the way the site is and the way the people that get attention act. And these vloggers are very much like that. They want to get stuff. Like, that's why... Um, they're not ready for it because if you look at the situation now with this kind of hindsight, you're thinking, hey, they probably just adopted the baby so they can make videos about it. And I've seen that happen. People get pregnant just to have the videos. They get engaged or married or they break up with someone or they adopt a dog. Like all these kinds of life events are getting exploited because people want to make cash on YouTube. They want to make the videos. 
That's easy money for them because especially, especially you got to remember these kinds of creators, they can't, they wouldn't succeed with other content. They probably tried to do commentaries or makeup videos or video gaming or all the other options, but they have to fall back on this vlog stuff and sharing their lives. And some people I'm sure do that as their first choice. I'm sure a lot of vloggers love it and they might you know, be genuine about it. But the way I see it is a lot of these people just kind of try to exploit life moments. They talk about their breakups, their divorces, their marriages, their kids. They bring all that stuff in because they know those buzzwords and those titles will get them interest in views. And that's what happened with this couple. You know, they adopted a kid and then they put adopted in the title and they put, you know, raising the kid this way, changing diapers as a video. You know, those are random examples um, just off the top of my head, but all their videos and I've seen their site, they do stuff like that. It's all about clickbait. And this is kind of the tale of clickbait going wrong. Them kind of facing the facts, realizing they weren't ready to adopt, they couldn't handle the kid. And it's also just exposing them as doing it for the money. Now let's read into the article and see what else the story has to say. Micah Stauffer, a parenting and lifestyle YouTuber with over 700,000 subscribers, included her viewers in every stage of her adoption journey, from fundraising to grappling with the ever-changing rules surrounding international adoption to bringing her son Huxley home from China in 2017. Okay, so they even did a round of fundraising. Okay, it looks like they even had a, a video example on that article. So let's check them out and see how they look. Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. Today is part three of Huxley's adoption update. If you are not familiar with my adoption update and you haven't seen part one or part two, I'll leave those in the description box below if you want to catch up on the journey. If not, let's get started on part three and let's talk about Huxley. The first thing I want to fill you in on is we are doing a little fundraiser for little Huxley. Okay, so this is looking bad already. You know, fundraisers already kind of get a bad rap people asking for money online, unless you're in the most dire situations, it's definitely can be frowned upon. It can make people turn their head. If you don't do it the right way too, it can look bad. Now, granted, this seems like all right so far. I mean, you, you have a kid. If you want to ask viewers to kind of ask for a donation, if they can, that's not the worst thing in the world on its own. But the fact that three years later they gave back the kid, I mean, do they are they going to give back that money? I'm not sure what part or how much they got here, but that's all that's all questionable to say the least. She updated followers on her son's progress as he adjusted to his new home with four siblings bonded with her husband, James, who runs a successful car detailing YouTube channel and received interventions for development deficits as a result of a brain tumor and stroke experienced in utero. And on Tuesday, she shared another update with her audience. Stauffer and her husband had placed Huxley in a new home, a decision that sparked outrage among some of her followers. Uh, I bet it did. I mean, that's the whole reason they were watching the channel and they just dropped the kid. This is by far the hardest video James and I have ever publicly had to make, Micah Stauffer said. With international adoption, sometimes there's unknowns and things that are not transparent on files and things like that, James Stauffer said. Once Huxley came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. The couple added that Huxley had received numerous therapies over the past three years and had begun more intense interventions in the past year. The feedback from medical professionals about their son's condition they said had been really hard and ultimately they felt that Huxley needed a home better equipped to support him. Now, this is sad and I don't even want to knock them for this. Like, I do not wish that kind of stuff upon any family. Like, God forbid your kids have issues. Anyone has issues, that sucks. So I won't knock them for that but it is a part of it. It is something I think they should have expected going into the adoption, going into having a kid in any situation, whether you're having birth, giving birth yourself, having someone have the kid for you, adopting, you gotta expect these kinds of things to happen. It sucks, but it's part of the job. And the fact it, the matter is they just shouldn't have, they, I don't know, they just can't give up. You gotta go, go hard, you gotta adopt. That kid is your kid, it's been three years, if you want to send them to some kind of treatment, like sometimes they have to go to a special school or something, that, that's understandable. But to give the whole thing up, I can see why people are upset, especially with this YouTube channel. It's hard to imagine the channel without it. I mean, it was all based 
on this adoptive baby stuff. So like, what are they going to do next? I think the channel's going to be pretty much dead. It's like losing the main cast member on a TV show, you know, like it's like trying to carry on with the office without Michael Scott. I mean, they would had two more seasons, but they definitely floundered. It definitely struggled and they reached and it definitely turned out not so well. And I can understand their situation somewhat, but I also understand the haters being not even haters, the fans being confused and just sh- shocked. It's shocking. After multiple assessments, after multiple evaluations, numerous medical professionals have felt that he needed a different fit and that his medical needs he needed more, Micah said, through tears. The YouTuber said the family had delayed making the video and remained vague about the details of their situation on social media to protect Huxley's privacy and ensure the success of his new adoption. I didn't want to mess up anything with what's going on legally, she said later, adding, the reason we haven't updated you sooner is because the medical professionals, the agencies, multiple people have been allowing for Huxley to spend time with some different people to see and to make the perfect match and fit for his now new forever family. Well, I think we thought this was his forever family and now he's moving on to another one. I don't know if there's going to be a good story and end for Huxley. I'm not even sure if he'll still have that name. Uh, It's just... At the end of the day, it's a really sad story on both sides. You want to kind of give them credit because you you feel bad for these emotions and these medical problems, issues like that. You don't want that to happen. But at the same time, these people put their lives on YouTube. And this is what happens when you do that. You got to expect that. You also have to have expectations when you go and make a YouTube channel that's based on your life. And especially when you base it on adopting a baby, like, yeah, people are going to be shocked and upset when you then decide you're going to give the baby back. I think it's really bold and interesting that they expected this to go over better. I would have seen this coming. I would have known, okay, like, we should not talk about this. Like, we should hide it or something. Like, I'm not saying, you know, they should be secretive and lie or something, but the fact that they came out with this announcement video and thought they could just take it on head on. It's definitely showing confidence, definitely showing lack of self-awareness. This is a bad thing. They should have been embarrassed. They should have been more sensitive going in. They shouldn't have just adopted without expecting something, without going in and being ready. It shows that they probably did that for the money and they got their money and now they want to move on because they're probably, you know, the website's probably floundering right now. I would guess this is a move someone would do not when they're making a lot of money. You know, like it probably worked for them for a couple of years. It looks like this era of their site started in 2017, about three years ago. So they got a few good years out of it, but they must have started to lose money and viewership. So they kicked the kid out. It's kind of hard, and I hate to say it like that, but that's what it seems like. And that's why people are upset. That's why we're talking about it today. Uh, terrible story. It's really hard to hear and talk about these issues, but. Yeah, I mean, look at this family. They look really beta already. I mean, the wife is pretty. That's She looks good in her videos. I can see why she started a YouTube. The guy, um, I mean, he looks like he tries to take care of himself, but he also looks really beta. I can see him running a car detailing YouTube. I'm wondering about that channel. I didn't know you could have a channel about cleaning cars, but hey, there's channels for everything out there. There's channels for adopting babies too. I didn't really know that specifically existed, but I guess I could have guessed because, you know, there's videos about babies and families already. This is just a genre or type I never heard of. But, yeah, it ended badly. And it just it shows a couple of young people they weren't ready. Yeah, they should have expected and had a, more of a reason to adopt. They made their money, though, and then now they're bailing. And it just shows the messed up side of YouTube, the kinds of people that are drawn to YouTube, the kind of bad things people will do to get famous, to make money to get attention. They'll adopt a baby. You know, you'll take a baby from another country and then when it doesn't work out and you don't have the right specifics that you want, you just trade it back in. I mean, it's like trading in a car or something. And I don't mean to say it like that. I don't think it's like that. It's just kind of a funny, ironic way to put this whole story. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts and everything below. Tell me what you think. Have you heard of this YouTube channel? How do you think this adoption thing played out? Do you think they were ready? Did they do it for the money? Let me know what you think below. Hit that like button to help support this video. And until next time, have a great day. 